Welcome everyone to Team Talk. It's so great to see and talk to all of you today to share all the wonderful innovations and guest first experiences that we're doing throughout the NCL brand. Today, I am pleased to be joined by two special guests who've flown halfway around the world to join us here in Miami to share some of the exciting things happening in their parts of the world. We have Eamon Farron, who is our head of international sales for the entire world. And we have Ben Angel, who looks over our sales in the Australia markets. Welcome, Eamon. Welcome, Ben. Thank you for having us, Harry. Thanks for having us, Harry. Pleasure to be here. So guys, you know, it's been an interesting couple of years now. You know, as, as things are coming back online, Eamon, maybe you can share what the sentiment is in the various critical places to us around the world. I'm happy to. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously, it's very different throughout the world. It depends which region you look at. And it's been fascinating to watch the journey over the last two years. It's been a tough two years for us all. Uh, but we bounced back pretty quickly in Europe and the UK. As you know, our return to sailing in July of last year with the Jade was a wonderful start to the season. Uh, and it was a really strong demand in, in both the UK and Europe particularly for people to get back to the ocean, to get back to what they love to do. And we find that very strong. And of course, we were hit a little bit later by, by Omnicrom and, and that had a little bit of ticket, a little bit of wind out of our sails. But generally, it's been very positive. It's moving at a great pace in the UK. We're seeing a strong bounce back. The same in Europe, it's strong. And in other areas of the world, uh, Ben's area, he'll talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, MEA in, in terms of Middle East and Africa and Asia uh, and, and other parts in, in Latin. It's been a little bit slower to come back, but they are starting to show great signs of, of progress. And, and we are definitely bouncing back, which, which is great to see. We, we can't wait to welcome all of our guests back on board. I, I remember back in 2019, our last great year, we had taken guests on board from over 180 countries around the world. So, Eamon, when are we going to have guests from 180 countries back on board our ship? I think this summer. This summer, I think we can have a lot of people. A lot of people. In, in the, you're, you're right. I was, if I reflect, in 2019, I was on the, the getaway during the Baltic cruise, and it was just so wonderful to see so many different personalities and nationalities. And you could hear you know, all the languages of the world on board, and everyone having a great time. So we have a worldwide brand. We have a worldwide product that delivers a world-class experience. And, and it's just wonderful to see so many nations of the world enjoying that. Couldn't agree with you more. So Ben, Australia had a, like a unique experience these last we couple did. of years. How, how are things ha going there now? Things are really good. Um, we finally unlocked the doors. So, uh, so you're here. Well, I'm here. <laughs> the, the, the first place I came was, uh, was to Miami. I've been here twice now in, uh, in the last few months, which is fantastic. And, and we're, we're positive. Uh, after two years of lockdown, uh, the Australian market is, is raring to go. Everybody is looking forward to getting on flights. Um, Europe's a very hot destination at the moment. So, you know, there's, uh, there's no concern about traveling long haul, which is great. Well, I guess if you live in Australia, everything is long Everything's haul. Everything's huh? long haul, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I remember once taking a trip from um, Australia to Tokyo, and you don't realize, like, those are long distances. Ten you know, hour just because they're, they're on the other side of the world, they're still <laughs> long distances. Um, so you talked a little bit about Europe, but Amy, maybe you could talk about what are some of the itineraries that are popular in our, from our international sourced guests? Yeah, well, uh, internationally, 50% of our, of our, generally across all of the international markets, will, will go to Europe. So there is a huge demand for Europe. But following that, you find also Caribbean will be around 50 to 20 percent and then of course asia is always pos positive and, and always uh, very very strong if you look back to 19 that was that was one of our fastest growing strongest area and things also like south africa and that, that wonderful uh, jade trip that goes down the middle east and then into into the islands in south africa is also very popular so people are looking for new experiences our new Ant antarctica product was doing very well as well it's obviously interrupted by events but but i think there's demand for worldwide like, people want to explore they want to experience uh, the cultures of the world. And it doesn't matter who you are, I think we find that demand comes from everywhere. So, so we see demand from all parts of our product, but, but certainly Europe is a, is a big draw. And Alaska as well is, is strong for, 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 for many of our markets. Australia particularly uh, is strong for, uh, for, uh, for Alaska as well. So, so I think with five ships in Alaska, eight in Europe this, this season, I, I think we're, we're very bullish on how we can fill that product with, with many international guests. So, you know, Eamon, I, I, I hear you've just gone sort of on a mini world trip yourself, visiting, you know, Sydney and uh, India and, and Brazil and a whole bunch of places. You know, culture's super important. Have you seen any changes in culture in our offices around the world or everyone is still in NCL, innovation, guest first, all the wonderful things we stand for? You know, I, I, would, I would say our leadership has led the way uh, and the way we've treated our people is is so strong that they reflect back that that behavior and that that great sentiment that we will bounce back we are bouncing back and, and it just comes across that passion that innovation for success and i see it worldwide i see it in, in ben's region and other regions we want to succeed we will succeed we're super excited about you know six more uh, prima products coming online. the line I, I think our travel partners are super excited about that you know uh, uh, the the success of the prima launch and the viva launch has been spectacular 
despite the pandemic. So, so I think we've seen some great uh, demand in that right. And Gordon and I would just see a really, really bright future for international. That's fantastic. So Ben, talking about Primo, well, what, are, what are you hearing from our travel partners, our guests, the they, things that they're most excited about coming on board? They love Prima. They love they Prima. Love Prima. Um, Me too. <laughs> everybody's talking about it being you know, the best ship that they've ever seen, obviously not in person as yet, but um, everyone's excited by the, the wonderful creative assets that we've got out there. Um, the fact that there's so much space on board, the fact that she looks so different, um, the destination she's visiting, it's tick, tick, tick across the board for us. So very, very positive. You know, it's been a little special for me because this is the first ship that I've actually been involved in various stages of the construction. So I think I've been out to the yard now four times. Wow. And it's just like so super exciting. You know, first it's a concept, then it's like a couple of Lego blocks on the side, <laughs> and then it's like a hull, and then like the interior. The last time I came in, you know, large parts of the interior were done. I can tell you, Ben, they are right to be excited. It I is going to be a it. fantastic ship. So, gentlemen, and I'll start with you, Eamon. What's your favorite itinerary? Like if you could go one place on NCL in 2022 yeah. uh, on vacation, uh, where would it be? Uh, oh, Alaska's on my list. Uh, Alaska. I've, never, I've never been, so I, I'm, it's on my, my list to do this year if I can. So, uh, yeah, very keen to do that because I've never done it before. Of course, Europe is always a great job. This, this year, I went on a personal vacation at, at our, on our, from Athens on our beautiful uh, seven-day uh, Greek itinerary. So that was fantastic. So that would be on, on my list. And, and as... As in terms of uh, other areas, I'd love to do the Antarctica trip as well. That would be, that would be on my list, I would say. Yeah. I, I think those are special. You know, I, I've been to Alaska now. Um, I went last year with my family, uh, and that was like the first time I'd been there in like probably 10 years. And it is fantastic. And some of the work we've done there with port development and uh, you know, in various places up there uh, is, is really special. It's this unique combination, wide open spaces, beautiful scenery. Uh, just, just scenic cruising. It, 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 it really is special. And you go to the glaciers up and close and, and, and it's worth it. It's worth it. It's a little longer trip for you than for me, but oh it's worth God. it. Can't say I've ever been to Antarctica, but I can imagine that that shares many of the, uh, the same appeal. And what about you, Ben? Where, where, what's on your bucket list? Well, I don't get a choice. The family decide where we're going um, and it's going to be Europe. Absolutely. Um, oh, I, my, think, I, I think we all understand who decides the vacation <laughs> choices in our respective families, so I'm not surprised there. So where in Europe are you going? Uh, I don't know yet. Um, my kids don't really remember because they're quite young. So they don't remember when we used to travel a lot and they can't remember the last cruise they did. We did a fantastic cruise with both of them That's on sad. Epic. That's sad. And um, we talk about it and we show them photos, but they don't remember. So right. they are thrilled at the idea of maybe recreating that cruise. So, you know, maybe, um, maybe Barcelona cruise. How old are your children cruise. now? They are seven and five. Seven and five. Yeah. Some special memory that you guys have to share or other words of wisdom to our, uh, our viewers today. You guys both have such passion. Uh, I mean, what was really special to me was our return to sailing last year and uh, on the very first sailing on the Jade. Uh, and and I, I I brought my I had my wife with me as well and, and to see the the people on board and to see how happy they were to be back and it was very emotional I mean it was you know, tears in the eyes and that sort of stuff it was just wonderful to see so so that for me is the this has been a very traumatic period for us all and uh, you know everyone has done such a wonderful job to get us to where I mean I noticed that Mark and his team have done a fantastic they job really on have. board yeah. and and you know I just love seeing the people enjoying what they do and, and giving our guests great experiences so that that's, that's a very warms my heart a lot. You know, I, I remember that trip and it, I, I had the same feeling. That was like the first major international I, trip I had taken. And I, I remember, you know, it's, it's a fairly long drive from the airport to the port. But when you like get around that last corner and you can see the, the ship, ship. Yeah. like we were all the way at the last dock in Piraeus. Yeah. And like you get there and you see the ship. I, I too had tears in my and my wife as well, who, who had joined me. Uh, um, it really was special. And, and, and just to see the crew, right. just to see the crew and when, welcome guests back on board. Um, we have a great product. and. Uh, um, thrilled that you were able to join that one. And for you, Ben? I think I've got two. Returning to office after nine months of working from home and seeing everybody's your, smiling Your wife faces. was happy for you to leave? She was <laughs> really happy for me to leave. I don't understand why. Um, seeing everyone back in the office after such a long period was just, uh, it was an incredibly emotional experience. The second one um, would be Walk for Wellness, which was an initiative we rolled out really the middle of, of the worst of the pandemic in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, we engage with our travel partners, that partner's first philosophy at the fore. Um, we encourage them to join us on a, uh, a walk. And it was essentially a, uh, a digital tracking um, uh, through an app. Uh, we walked a very long way, 100,000 kilometers as a group. Wow. And, and really the purpose was to, uh, to engage with our travel partners who were isolated at home, whose businesses had been decimated. Um, and encourage them to, to take a walk for their mental health and their physical health. And I think we all know the importance of holidays for mental well-being. 
And it was just a really good reminder that we, you know, we work in a fantastic industry and we are through some of the most difficult times. We are supporting our travel partners and our guests and their mental health, giving them a break from their everyday, everyday lives. You know, I, I love that this, this both partners first, guests first and innovative experience. Uh, you know, as we talked about before, this culture pervades the organization. So I love Absolutely, when yeah. these new ideas come from everywhere. You know, another great new idea we had, Amy, which I think you championed uh, first out of the UK office, was this new partner reward program. Yeah. Maybe you can tell the listeners a little bit about that too. Sure, I'd love to. Yeah, I mean, uh, to, to Ben's point, I think, you know, our partnerships are a true strategic partnership with our travel partners. We want to grow with them. It's a business, it's a, it's a partnership in life. And uh, how do we grow with them? So we, we introduced a new loyalty program uh, to our travel partners. Uh, and it's based on a tiered structure. And the more you sell, the more points you make. And it's gone down significantly well. We went from a standing start of zero to over 4,000 UK travel partners uh, uh, on the scheme. And, and uh, the more they sell, the more points they earn, the more points they earn, the more they can redeem on up to 10,000 different items, uh, prizes and things that they can redeem against, uh, like a loyalty scheme, uh, an airline loyalty scheme. And we're launching now and looking to launch in parts of Europe and also in Australia. So the intention is to roll it out to a lot of more international markets. And uh, we love keeping our travel agent partners happy. And the great thing about it is we know the individual who's actually making the sales. It's not the company or the HQ, if you like. It's the individual, Harry at ncl.com, is who we can see now sales. And I just, before this, uh, this call, I just had a look at our, at our one, one, one travel partner. You could also move your points. So he has left one company to join another company. And he took his points with him. Point with him. So we, because he is the seller, not the company. Fantastic. So we find it very good. It's working very, very well. So we're like super proud of Sun and Spirit. Maybe you guys can talk to our, uh, our, our viewers a little bit about what's happening with those two ships. Well, we, we are thrilled that finally, after a very long delay, uh, we're going to be welcoming Spirit down to Australia uh, at the end of this year. Obviously, um, Spirit is a fantastic ship. She's had an extensive, and I think that's putting it mildly, an extensive renovation. Um, she has had the most money spent on her of uh, the whole fleet, as I understand. Yes. I've yet to experience that. I've yet Me to too. see her. I, I, oh, I have. And, and what was it like? It, uh, it's a stunning, stunning, stunning refurbishment. Obviously, so I was lucky enough to take her from, from dry dock after the re refurb all the way to from, uh, from Italy then into Israel. So I was actually the last just before we, the pandemic hit. That was in February of 2020, oh, I guess. Fantastic. So she looks absolutely stunning. She's a beautiful ship. You're going to love it. Your Australian customers are going to love it. Oh, I can't wait. And so taking our nice, best, newly refurbished ship into a hot Bringing market. her down into Australia. And, and for anyone who's watching who hasn't been to Australia yet, there really is no better way to see Australia than, uh, than on Spirit. So make your bookings. <laughs> I hope to join you myself sometime. Look forward to it. <laughs> So for me, you know, I'm excited about seeing you again soon because I think the next time I see you is going to be on, on some new ship. I think it's the Prima <laughs> in some like really wonderful place somewhere halfway around the world. So that I know is going to be an exciting, I, anytime I see you, it's an exciting milestone. Uh, uh, so I, I'm definitely looking forward to that one. Well, thank you, Ben. Thank you, Eamon, for today. And for all of our viewers out there, I hope that some of the passion that Ben and Eamon have shared today has come through the camera. You guys know International is a special place in my heart as I looked over that before my current role and I've gotten to know Ben and Eamon. They're doing great things in their region. Well, you know, for Eamon, it's a really big region, the whole world, except for the United States and Canada. And we have exciting, exciting things planned that's going to engage our customers throughout. We always look at things through a guest first perspective. We love our guests from all over the world and look forward to welcoming them on board Prima and all the other ships in our fleet. Thank you guys so much. And thank you, Ben. And thank you, Eamon. Thanks for having us, Harry. Pleasure. Thank you.